Hello and welcome to another episode of Gemstone Mine. I'm John and today we have another video primer. You may remember a few months ago when we talked about the Simic build of Vol, Candlekeep Researcher, the little librarian who could. Today I'm going to give an in-depth look at the Azorius build of that deck. You may remember that I talked about this deck just a little bit when I managed to top 16 at Okotoberfest 2022 and that was pretty amazing. I've had some time to tweak the deck, I've talked to a few people and gotten some advice on how to build the deck up a little bit more, and quite honestly, the part that's been most exciting to me is there have been a number of people who've asked me, how do I play this deck? I want to learn how to play it. So that's what we're going to do today. Before we get started, I just want to thank you for joining us. Always great to have you guys here with me. It feels nice to know that I'm not just talking into a can. And I'd like some feedback today as I've got some new equipment going on and I want to know how things look. So please. Leave some feedback in the comments. Let me know how the audio sounds, how the video looks. And if you feel we've earned it, please go ahead and give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. And you can always send us an email at gemstonemindpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can add us on Twitter, where we are at gemstonemindmtj. Our commander, who I've used before, is Vol, Candlekeep Researcher. Three and a blue for a 2-3 legendary creature, human wizard, with choose a background, vigilance, and tap. Add an amount of colorless mana equal to Vol's toughness. This mana can't be spent to cast spells from your hand. Our background of choice is Noble Heritage. It is one in a white for a legendary enchantment background with commander creatures you own have when this creature enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control. For each opponent who does, you gain protection from that player until your next turn. The advantage here is that Noble Heritage usually gets played before Vol, not always, but usually. And in that case, we immediately get Vol up to the five toughness that we need to combo with a card like Staff of Domination. As we'll see in a few moments, hitting that toughness of five means we can immediately combo off with Staff of Domination and win the game very easily. And if we ever get to seven toughness on Vol, it is almost impossible to stop the combo with conventional interaction. Only something with split second actually stops the combo there. So let's start out by talking about our game plan. As a commander, Vol is an interesting choice for a CDH table because they offer one of the biggest mana sources available, and one that actually scales with their toughness, oddly enough. This allows Vol to generate infinite mana with two different artifacts, Umbral Mantle and Staff of Domination. And the rest of this deck is basically built around trying to set these combos up the most easily. The cool part about Vol is that the entire core of the combo, as well as a reasonable number of tutors you can use to get your win conditions, are available in blue. So there are a lot of different color combinations you could potentially play. You can see our previous video on Simic Vol for another take. Today though, our goal is on the Azorius build, White Blue, which is attractive by virtue of Noble Heritage, a background which is a very reliable way to get Vol up to 5 toughness, important for a reason we'll get to in a few moments. White also has the advantage of giving us a lot of very good tutors to get Umbral Mantle. Stoneforge Mystic, Steel Shaper's Gift are both very efficient ways to tutor for this line, while also supporting other options for mana sinks and assembling some great two-card win conditions. Azorius, being a relatively slow controlling color combination, really informs how we want to go about our game plan. Number one, Azorius has some very strong answers. Blue's suite of counter spells, combined with white's answers to a lot of different types of permanents, as well as some stacksy effects from both sides of the color pie, and you get a very strong option to support a control game plan. Azorius also gets a surprising number of really good card advantage engines. Obviously, everyone knows that when you're grinding into the mid-game, a card advantage engine like Rhystic Study or Mystic Remora can be incredibly powerful. Since our commander doesn't actually give us any card advantage, we need to make sure we have some other options in the 99 as well. So, we're going to be running white cards like Esper Sentinel and Archivist of Augma, both of which have been excellent in my experience, as well as all-stars like Ledger Shredder, who have been fantastic ads. So our usual goal with the deck is to lean into Azorius' strengths, then use the card advantage engines in the deck with Azorius' controlling nature to allow us to drag the game out until we can assemble our combo and win. We want to position ourselves to stop the faster decks at the table while accruing card advantage. This leads us to the realization that Draco style control is not really an option in multiplayer formats. 
We recently talked about the concept of crowd control in Commander, and we talked even longer ago about using your opponent's stacks pieces to your advantage. And in CDH, there are going to be a lot more threatening cards played on a given turn cycle than even in a regular game of Commander. And you can't answer all of them, even in Azorius. So Vol's role at most tables is to try to stop the fastest decks on the table from going for it before we can assemble our combo or our engines. But it also means we are virtually allying ourselves with the other players at the table to stop that fastest player and to keep them from going for it early. Vol can win through a lot of stacks, including Rule of Law, though usually it's better to go for the win protected still. Sometimes it is correct to just let the rule of law stick, especially if there are multiple faster decks at the table, which are going to try to storm off and win, and you're not confident you have a hand that can stop them. Even stacks pieces which are a hard stop to our game plan are sometimes worth letting resolve, unless we have an abundance of counter magic and removal in hand. Anti-artifact stacks, like Collector Oof, Stony Silence, Karn the Great Creator, basically prevent all of our combos from working, but we'll often rely on removal to navigate around these pieces to get to our win. Anti-activated ability stacks like Linvala Keeper of Silence and Phyrexian Invoker also shut us down, turning off Vol's mana ability. But we can usually leave less symmetrical stacks pieces like Dranith Magistrate online to stymie our opponents while we develop our value engines. In Vol, just like a lot of other slower decks in CDH who lack card advantage in the command zone, having a clear path to sticking a card advantage engine is usually priority number one for our game plan, because Vol is generally going to be a win-after type of deck. So what do I mean by win-after? Ken, from Stacked EDH, has a theory recently, describing four basic patterns of how decks win in CDH, which he describes as win, win through, win after, and win because. The first one, win, is very simple. The first player to go for it doesn't get stopped, so they win. Win through is a little bit different. In win through, you try to win while an opponent has onboard resources to interact or draw towards interaction. Win after is player A goes for the win, but gets stopped by players C and D, so player B untaps and wins. Win because, the final example, is another player inadvertently creates an opening for you to win. Turbo decks, like Rogsai, like to win or win through. They go fast and try to go for it before their opponents are ready to interact. They go for it before their opponents are all set up. The issue in CDH is that the window where opponents are still getting ready is really, really small. So only the fastest decks can consistently go for that turbo style of win. And win through is pretty similar. Being in Azorius, Vol is way too slow to consistently go for a turbo win. Sure, once in a blue moon, you draw a bonkers hand where you can just turn one Vol plus Noble Heritage, untap on turn two, play a Staff of Domination, and present the win. But usually, Vol is going to win after. Vol wants the rest of the table to expend their resources and their interaction trying to fight each other, while not being the most threatening player at the table, quietly accruing value and chipping in damage until Vol can go for it, usually with backup counter magic. One of the big things that Azorius brings to the table as a color identity for Vol are things like Ranger Captain of Eos, Grand Abolisher, and Silence. We've talked about the power of Silence before. The ability to turn off our opponent's interaction is an incredible form of protection, albeit one that takes more time and resources to set up. Vol also has that classic brewer's advantage of a deck that is tough for opponents who haven't faced it yet to be able to dissect on the fly. Let's face it, the wording on both Vol and Noble Heritage are both pretty wonky, and if you're seeing these cards for the first time, being expected to dissect what they mean, that can be pretty difficult. It's hard to be able to say that that is the scariest thing at the table when someone else is presenting a turn two Nas. So sometimes you do wind up winning because one of your opponents didn't realize you were on an artifact combo when they go to remove that stony silence for you. So how does Azorius Vol actually win? We're going to either get Vol's toughness to five, with Noble Heritage being the easy way for us to do it in the command zone, and then land Staff of Domination in order to generate five mana, which is enough to spend three with Staff of Domination to untap Vol, spend one from that mana, leaving one left over to untap Staff of Domination, netting us infinite generic mana. Or we try to land Umbral Mantle with another card as our outlet for that infinite generic mana. Let's talk next about the concept of low color advantage. Now a big issue in the CDH metagame with 
basically perfect mana fixing available is that there's really very little cost to playing a high color deck like four color partners or a five color Najila or Kenrith deck. Why limit yourself to two colors which doesn't really touch red for powerhouses like Breach or Dockside, or colors like black for Gnaws or Rituals. Again, I could cite Brewer's Advantage, but Azorius isn't as badly positioned as a color pair as a lot of people tend to think. Blue and white complement each other extremely well in CDH. What Azorius has historically lacked in CDH is a compelling win condition, and Vol fills that niche of a win condition very easily. Staff of Domination is a one-card win condition when Vol has five toughness, and Umbral Mantle is part of an A plus B combo that just requires a mana outlet as our B card and you draw your deck and win the game. Or just dump it all into something like Walking Ballista and again, win the game. There's not a lot of creatures that actively can replace Vault. Tapping for at least five mana is not easy. Now, if you go back to the Simic build of the deck, you could potentially make it work with something like Circle of Dreams Druid or Priest of Titania or similar elves who care about more elves or more creatures, but then you're assembling an A plus B combo without the benefit of your command zone. And that's a fair bit more difficult than simply assembling it with the cards in your command zone. It's a fair plan B, but the Azorius version just offers so much in the command zone and so much in the way of interaction and card advantage that I've really enjoyed it so far. As I'm a lot happier casting Silences than I would be casting Veil of Summer. And I'd rather resolve in Ranger Captain of Eos than an Allosaurus Shepherd most of the time. The reason to play Vol is that you want to play a slower, more controlling deck that has very unique win conditions and supports that win condition through the unique strengths of the Azorius color pair. I've also received some requests to talk about how to mulligan with Vol. A good rule of thumb is to mull until you have a path to an early card advantage engine. In the current iteration of the list, which is being maintained on the CDH decklist database's Brewer's Corner, I hold Ristic Study, Esper Sentinel, Mystic Remora, Ledger Shredder, and Archivist of Ogma as the most compelling reasons to keep an opening hand. And I'd rather keep a hand that has an abundant fast mana source to land Vol and well as another outlet like Prophet of Distortion or even Diviner's Wand. I think outlets are very nice because they give you a lot more options to win the game, but I would consider them to be a tier below those raw card advantage engines of Ristic Study, Esper Sentinel, blah 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 they are just stronger in those early phases of the game where you're still tight on mana. The second requirement I would consider for good opening hand is to have lots of interaction to stop a fast start from your opponents, particularly when you expect them to get moving early. If you are sitting across from a Winota player, your opening hand has a Swords to Plowshares, that feels really good. You will often see these decks trying to power out something strong early, and stopping them after they put a lot of resources into it can be a great way to take control of the board. A nice fluster storm can be a great way to punish those turbo ad nauseum decks after they feed multiple rituals into a nauseum that you counter. That feels great too. Overall, just having that early interaction against the faster decks, which most decks in the format are going to be for us, is a great place to start with a hand as well. After that, it's nice to have a clear path to either Staff of Domination or Umbral Mantle, but card advantage and interaction are definitely top priorities, followed closely by a clear way to ramp into our game plan. Nice, but not strictly necessary. You should, however, plan based on which routes become more likely as you go. For example, if you draw into Steel Shaper's Gift, you probably want to aim for an early Umbral Mantle win, so you'll probably want to devote more energy into digging for and playing a mana outlet like Prophet of Distortion. But if you have an unconditional artifact tutor like War of Invention, I'd almost always rather land Staff of Domination and win that way, and plan to get Vol to 5 Toughness with Noble Heritage. That said, sometimes the correct play is to disguise how easily you can get to your win. And a fantastic lateral in the deck is a card like Diviner's Wand. This 3-mana equipment sees play in just 3,000 decks, according to edhrec.com at the time of recording. Equips for 3, or equips as a triggered ability if a wizard enters the battlefield, and it gives the equipped creature Whenever you draw a card, this creature gets plus one, plus one till end of turn, and gains flying until end of turn, as well as spend four generic mana, draw a card. It's one of my favorite plays when I already have a win condition like Umbral Mantle in hand, and I want to then kind of disguise this fact. So I will waste a tutor, quote unquote, on Diviner's Wand, and I'll tell my opponents I think we're in for a grind game, it looks like we're really going to slow down, and I don't really have a great way to grind through 
whatever stack speed someone has landed. I will then tutor up Diviner's Wand, and it's nice, it gets around a lot of stack pieces that people don't expect, like Stony Silence. If you cast Diviner's Wand first, then cast Vol, you can have the triggered ability attach the Diviner's Wand to Vol. All of the abilities on the equipment are just granted to the creature. The equipment itself doesn't actually have the activated ability or the triggered ability. Our natural draw step immediately gets Vol up to 4 toughness. And if you can draw a second card from somewhere else, Vol is now sneakily at 5 toughness, which is what we need to win with Staff of Domination. It also acts as a mana outlet if we decide we're going to try to win with Umbral Mantle instead. And it's also just kind of nasty where we have a 4-5 flyer who can just start to clock people if we're getting into a really grindy kind of game. It allows for a natural line where we can win on the spot after resolving either Umbral Mantle or Staff of Domination, with Wand serving as the outlet for Mantle, and easily bringing Vol to 5 Toughness with Staff. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First things first, get your priorities in order. Opening Hand needs to have card advantage, interaction, and ideally some fast mana. Worry about assembling your combo after you have the ability to grind out the mid-game, stop the faster opponents, and get Vol on the table in the first place. You need to play into Azorius' strength to be successful with this deck. Don't try to play against them. So after all of this, you may be asking, why play Vol at all? Surely there are a lot of high color decks that are much easier to win with, have card advantage in the command zone. Why not just play Blue Farm and get access to black and red? While I can't speak for everybody, I can speak for myself personally. And I really like commander-centric decks, particularly commander-centric win conditions. Vol is incredibly fun to play. I enjoy the combo with Staff of Domination and Umbral Mantle, and they're really unique in CDH. You don't see them in a lot of other decks. I personally really enjoy how the Azorius playstyle fits with what Vol's game plan is going to be. But you may have noticed that the core of the deck fits entirely into Mono Blue. I've already built the Simic version of the deck, and you can definitely get the deck working in Demir as well. I haven't put as much thought into Is It because I already have other Is It decks that I usually play in CDH. But with Demir, you could potentially use the background Cultist of the Absolute to immediately bump Vol up to 6 toughness. It becomes a little risky though because if you get stopped and Black not having a whole lot of extra interaction, it's a little bit more likely than an Azorius, but you then immediately go off with Staff of Domination and have an easy road to win. If there were a red background which granted haste, I'd be all over that too, but I really have not done a lot of experimentation in Is It yet. Basically, Vol may be the deck for you, if you want a deck that can go for it with lots of protection and plays a really unique win condition that most CDH players probably don't get to see very often, give it a shot. You may really enjoy it. So, so far, Vol has really performed well for me. As I mentioned, it was the deck that I took to a top 16 finish at Oktoberfest in 2022, and it's definitely on the short list of decks that I want to take to LotusCon this fall. Monarch Media is throwing another fall event. This time it is Lotus Con, and Vol is maybe one of my top three decks that I want to consider taking to it. I got a few other brews that are in the works. I don't think I'm going to play anything on meta at the event, but we'll see. I may be able to be convinced by somebody smarter than I am for it, but I don't know. Vol's just a lot of fun, so it is on my short list of decks that I want to take to Lotus Con. Let me know what you think. Are there any other hidden gem commanders who you want to bring for your next brewer's choice? Is there something else you've been experimenting with? Let us know in the comments on YouTube. We are Gemstone Mine Podcast. You can add us on Twitter, where we are at Gemstone Mine MTG, or you can send us an email, Gemstone Mine Podcast at gmail.com. Until next time, I'm John, and this is Gemstone Mine.